Hello and welcome to today's session. The session we are going to take today is Of Sorrow by Michael D. Montaigne. It is an essay written by him. The name here of Michael D. Montaigne is variously pronounced. He is a French writer, French essayist rather I should say, Montaigne, Montaigne, Montaigne and so forth. There are many pronunciations. So, uh, he has written on sorrow. The thoughts that he portrays here is, although he is writing on sorrow, but he is neither liking it nor has any reason to portray that he has any inclination towards sorrow. So, he himself says, I neither like it in myself nor admire it in others. This particular essay uh, was written in French language, but we have a translation by John Cotton with us and we are going to uh, read that and also summarize it. So, here in one of the statements he says, light griefs can speak, deep sorrows are dumb. So, the entire essay portrays that when somebody is struck by absolute sorrow, there are no words to express it. It is so miserable an emotion that people are dumbfound and they are not able to express it. The Italians according to him more fitly baptized by this name malignity and they tried to explain it by saying that it is always very hurtful. Then it is a cowardly, mean and base emotion, always idle and vain and it is forbidden to their sages. Uh, throughout this essay, uh, Montaigne tries to give us uh, anecdotes, the casual anecdotes, but then he makes them um, uh, in, interwoven into this essay in a very intellectual manner. So, he gives us uh, short stories out of, uh, uh, short stories after stories in order to give us the exact theme of this essay. So, he begins by story number 1, where we have Samathicus the king of Egypt and Cambyses, the king of Persia. Uh, Samathicus, uh, it seems, was defeated by the king of Persia. So, his entire family, his friends, his domestic servants, they were all taken hostages and they were uh, the victims of war at that moment. His own daughter was um, imprisoned and she was passing by him. We could see, he could see her as a prisoner and the son was immediately afterwards led for an execution, but he did, not, he did not move, he did not portray any emotion, just stood there watching them. Then after that, one of his domestics uh, were taken as prisoner and he was dragged away. Amongst the captives, he could see his friends also. At that moment, he started crying bitterly. This was quite surprising, whereas he could see his own um, daughter and son being dragged away in this manner and being executed, he did not react. But his domestic servant, his friends, when they were taken in the same position, then he cried out bitterly. We will come back to this story a little later. In the meantime, there is another story of the similar kind. He says, there was a prince of his own nation, it seems, and he witnessed the death of his elder brother. Then he witnessed the death of his younger brother. But then there were no emotions coming to him. Afterwards, we see his servant, he died after a few days and on his death, he started behaving in a manner as if extreme sorrow had struck him. He started tearing his hair, beating his breast. Then it seems as if brimful of grief overflowed the bounds of all patience. He, so, he broke all patience, the level of all patience and started crying out bitterly. Again, this is very difficult to explain. Why was he crying on the plight which was meted out to the servants or to the other people and could not cry when his own brother, elder and younger one were killed, just like Samathicus. So, um, coming back to the story of Samathicus, Cambyses after some times asked Samathicus, why you did not move at the calamity of your son and your daughter? Similarly, why was it that so great impatience you bore when the misfortune of the similar kind was struck on your friend? For this, Samathicus answered, that the last one could be manifested by tears. The last one meaning when his friend and his domestic servant were taken as prisoners and they were dragged for execution, that could be manifested by tears. 
but the first two that means when his daughter and his son they were being dragged at that mo moment it was far exceeding any manner of expression meaning extreme sorrow he was feeling it but he could not portray it he stood there as a statue so having learnt about his own words we come to now understand that extreme sorrow is inexpressible and he could not express it when his daughter or son were killed so uh, coming to the third story this is the sacrifice of ephigenia he has uh, quoted as i said anecdotes after anecdotes which are trying to explain to us that sorrow is not expressible by people especially which is beyond their own comprehension okay so uh, there was this ancient painter who had drawn how ephigenia was killed and when at the time the body was brought in uh, front of many people who were known to ephigenia at that time the sorrow could be seen on each one's face so he painted sorrow on the face of all those who were witness to the dead body but when he came to uh, the father of this girl he drew him with a veil over his face the father's face could not be seen surprisingly that no kind of countenance was capable of expressing such a great degree of sorrow this was his explanation when people asked him why didn't you draw any signs of emotion or basically sorrow over the face of the father of this ephigenia so the explanation which the painter gave was that it was not in his capacity to paint sorrow on the face of the father whereas he could do it for the others who were not so closely related to ephigenia Uh, story number four also expresses the same type of feeling. This is the story of Niobe, and she had lost seven sons, then seven daughters, and then she was so overwhelmed with her losses that at last she was transformed into a rock. That means she was not able to portray any emotion, and finally the rock could be her identity. If you can see the weeping rock, which is Mount Cephalus. Manisa Turkey it's still there it exists and people say this is Niobe which who had suffered so many losses the seven sons and daughters died in front of her so it is quite clear now that when we are oppressed with accidents greater than we are able to bear we become melancholic we become dumb and we are deaf stupefaction which benumbs all our faculties so at that moment we are not able to do any movement we are not able to express this sorrow this emotion which is so grave and we just become like a statue similar to niobe excessive grief astonishes all the souls we are aware and wholly deprives her of her ordinary functions the day to day functions a person who is struck with sorrow or grief is not able to perform very well as it happens to every one of us who upon any sudden alarm of very ill news god forbid if any one of us has heard some very ill news what happens to us we are surprised we are stupefied we are deprived of all the power of motion at that moment we are not able to move and express the soul then finally vents out all the pressure of this emotion in the form of tears and lamentations later so we do it to free our souls of this sudden oppression this is true for all nations all human beings everywhere so here at this moment uh, montaigne uh, gives another story to exemplify uh, he speaks about ferdinand he was a man at arms and he was quite uh, a brave soldier everybody was reveling in the gallant behavior that he showed in one of the wars people were congratulating him he was finding it extremely uh, happy occasion that everybody was applauding him as a warrior and many dead bodies were uh, brought in in the room where they were all reveling in this uh, gallant person's achievements at this moment one of the bodies was brought the armor was taken off and the moment this was done ferdinand could immediately see that this was the body of his own son he without uttering a word or turning away his eyes from the woeful object just stood there fixedly it was the body of his son as i said the vehemence of sorrow overcame his vital spirits and made him sink down stone dead to the ground he could not show any emotions at that moment no tears came to his eyes but he was 
dumb at that moment and he just sank down dead on the ground. Uh, there are many other uh, stories of the similar kind, but uh, Montaigne here also says that it is not just sorrow which strikes us like this. Sometimes we are uh, so taken over by the extreme joy that the similar thing happens to us. He speaks about a Roman lady who died of joy seeing his son safely return from the defeat of Kani. Similarly, Thalna who died in Corsica reading news of the honours the Roman senate had decreed in his favour. So, people when they are expecting good news of this kind, suddenly the extreme joy strikes them just like extreme sorrow and the expression is same that they are not able to express it. That means, neither extreme joy nor extreme sorrow can be portrayed through any human emotions. Uh, according to Montaigne, in his time, this was Pope Leo X which he is speaking about, uh, the news came of taking of Milan, a thing he had so ardently desired, was wrapped with so sudden an excess of joy that he immediately fell into a fever and he died. So, he could not take the joy so easily and he died of this. Then he speaks of Diodorus, the dialectician, who died on the spot out of an extreme passion of shame for not being able to disengage himself from a nice argument that was propounded on him. So, he was expecting an argument and it was propounded, but he could not help but just die of the joy. So, coming to the final end of this uh, essay, uh, Montaigne here tries to make a comparison between uh, the two things the, that affect life so much. One is this sorrow and how uh, life becomes full of this venom and it is then portrayed in the form of tears, only those expressible joy, joys or sorrows which can be expressed through them. Otherwise, people are not able to bear it and then finally, they die of uh, when they are struck with extreme extremities of this kind, either joy or sorrow and life shatters in front of them. The effect of sorrow is grave on each and every soul and believe me, uh, Montaigne is not in favour of sorrow, although he has written a great deal about it in, throughout the essay. He himself says at one of the points, he says, I for my part am very little subject to these violent passions. I am naturally of a stubborn apprehension, he says, which also by reasoning I every day harden and fortify. So, he says I am unaffected by this sorrow, initially also he began by saying the same and towards the end also, although he says many people are affected by it and this is how things keep on happening. Today also the same thing happens, human beings have remained the same throughout. So, that was all about of sorrow, this was Michael D. Montaigne writing to us, uh, this is his world famous essay. So, thanks a lot and have a good day.